Greetings everybody, uh, it's been a long time since I've done a video, four or five months or so has gone by. Um, I'm presenting to you today a box full of uh, goodies, uh, fresh off the plane, literally. Uh, this arrived today, uh, my doorsteps, uh, yeah, let's see, it was packed uh, on the 11th and it is the 14th and yeah, so it's hot off the plane, came straight from Japan, uh, utilized uh, Rakuten Global Express once again, so that's why you see Global Rakuten Express, Rakuten Global Express. Um, yeah, uh, you may have noticed the gaping hole here. Yes, I did receive this package from FedEx, uh, damaged. Um, I was obviously nervous, uh, I haven't experienced this before. Um, but the quick way for me to find out whether anything was missing was simply uh, weighing my box. And sure enough, well, luckily for me, it was 3,841 grams. So safe to say that I don't think I've lost anything. <laughs> I actually gained uh, one gram. This is probably just the packaging. Anyways, uh, I think that's it for opener. Uh, I haven't opened anything yet. Uh, I'm just gonna simplify things here by opening it from the back. I vaguely remember all the stuff that I bought, but uh, there might be some surprises. Okay, so packing. So we packed it. Decently, right? Um, corners have been taped. It's just probably just the rigors of uh, getting these boxes uh, thrown around by uh, different carriers. Um, why don't I just dump all the stuff out just so that I can organize things a little bit better? This big box out of the way too. There's some bubble wrap. Probably some invoices. Let's see. All right, 3.8 kilos of tools. Pull that box down. All right, everybody. I was able to get all the wrapping and clutter and get things a little organized uh, for your viewing pleasure here. So uh, without uh, any particular order, let's get on with the tool showcase. Um, why don't I start off with uh, pliers. Uh, coming up here is uh, slip joint pliers from Lobster. I featured uh, Lobster slip joint pliers in a video a long time ago. Uh, but this one is a simpler, simplified version of the one that I showed. Uh, the difference uh, being, okay, so first off, it is made in Japan. Um, yeah, unlike the other one that I showed, this one does not have the uh, screw extraction jaw profile. The rest is the same. Uh, except this one is uh, plated and does not have come with handles but rather stylized grips which are pretty cool and yes forged made in Japan which is always a nice uh, reassuring thing to see when it's forged in the actual tool uh, flush joint uh, which is something that they came up with uh, way before uh, American manufacturer called Wild Wild came up with uh, just a little interesting fact there. Moving on to more pliers. Uh, how, uh, how about uh, some Tsunoda stuff? This is actually the first time I've, I am buying Tsunoda stuff. Uh, thanks to other uh, YouTubers and uh, J Japanese tool fans uh, over at uh, the Garage Journal. Uh, I think you guys have pretty much convinced me that uh, these are worth trying, especially for the price. Uh, yes, I gotta admit, uh, the price point is pretty attractive uh, given the tool that you are getting. Uh, obviously, I have no first-hand experience, 
Oh, actually, I'm lying. I do have experience with uh, Tsunoda pliers from all the way back in 2008. It's just not marked Tsunoda, but uh, marked something else. I'll probably do a video on that uh, in the future. In any case, I'm detracting from the actual video here, which is to showcase these guys from their power series um, and cutter, and a straight on cutter. Uh, obviously, not in the same category uh, as a Knipex uh, coal bolt cutters, but uh, they are. There is a multiplication factor, obviously, as you can see there. Uh, I'll touch on those in a future video. Here's another end cutter also from Tsunoda. Uh, however, this one is a more flush cut, practically a flush cut, semi flush cut, uh, for working on a little bit more precision stuff. Um, yeah, I'll do a separate video. Yes, made in Japan. As indicated there too, these are etched, but uh, nice to know that the forging there, King TTC, is indicated. And the last uh, Tsunoda item is uh, plastic nippers. These are flush cuts, uh, spring loaded, or a spring. These are actually convertible, that's actually the reason why I bought these. Uh, apparently, it's patented. I believe for that particular feature. Yes, this one is made in Japan as well. Uh, yeah, why don't I just show you the feature that I'm talking about. It's better to actually show it to you than to explain it to you. So as you can see right now, this is not a spring-loaded joint, but uh, right there is a leaf spring. Uh, Let's see, yeah, I think it was, I watched the video on Tsunoda's site. Yeah, that's right. So all you need to do is just depress that and slide this leaf spring over. And now you got a pair of spring loaded, spring action uh, end cutters, or sorry, uh, flush cuts. So if you want to put it on toolbox or you want to keep things compact or you don't want the springy spring loaded function, uh, these are convertible in that way. So that's why I bought that one. Okay, so that's it for Tsunoda stuff. Uh, another uh, flush cut. Uh, different size, uh, interesting uh, ergonomic uh, handle here. Also from a company in Sanjo, which is uh, in Niigata Prefecture in central Japan. Uh, we got uh, these Keiba Ergo Nippers. Um, this is for right hand right handers so they also have a version for left handers where the curvature is going well, this way um, yes uh, flush cutters but with a sorry with a standard um, curvature unlike uh, flush cuts that are uh, flat bottom these ones are uh, like a standard uh, diagonal cutter. They do have a curvature built into it. So that is from uh, Keba, uh, from their Ergo series, which is a series, by the way, that's been around since, uh, I can't remember exactly, probably from the 90s. Uh, not sure how that uh, compares with some of the European brands who have uh, also ergonomic uh, Ergo-shaped handles. Uh, moving on to Hozan, not a manufacturer, but uh, a buyer. Uh, this one is actually made in Japan. Uh, this tool, by the way, was featured by another YouTuber. Uh, his channel name is Bizug. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, but uh, he featured this in one of his uh, tool haul videos. Um, he likes to feature Japanese and European tools. Uh, I was intrigued by this. You can probably tell it, it is a blowgun, yes. Uh, but the cool thing about it, or the interesting thing about it, is that it does have an adjustable output, uh, or uh, you got high flow, low flow. Uh, so you got high flow, Full output and then you got uh, low flow yeah something like that 
the action's a little bit different uh, from the El Cheapo one that I have had for uh, you know over 10 years. It's I think it was made in India. It's a rubber rubber instead of silicone. Um, the action's a little bit different. Uh, in any case, uh, it does come with this attachment nozzle for getting into the nooks and crannies. All right, that's that. Uh, did I show you that? I think I said, yeah, made in Japan right there. Molded right in the silicone. Nice to see that. Uh, moving on to uh, some top items. Top is also another manufacturer uh, in Sanjo. So Sanjo really is a kind of a powerhouse uh, when it comes to tool manufacturing. Uh, yeah, label indicates made in Japan. Uh, does the tool actually say it? Uh, not actually forged or laser etched, but I know for a fact, I can't say for a fact, but I'm pretty darn certain all of their uh, rush, um, adjustable wrenchers, wrenches or shifters, as uh, some people like to call them in certain areas of the world, are made in Japan in their own facility. This one is their short uh, echo wide. That's what that's how they say it, echo wide. Short echo wide. Um, so this is, uh, as you can see, a stubby, but uh, you get a nice uh, wide jaw, seven to 26 millimeter uh, for this size, but they also have a bunch of other models that go up all the way up to 49 millimeter uh, jaw opening. And the cool feature about this uh, is even in this uh, extended jaw opening full width, uh, you don't got you don't get any protrusion, which could get in the way. So that's one of the features. And you got a little uh, area to uh, hook up, hook your uh, index finger into if you had to. Uh, yeah, I'll get into more detail on uh, top adjustables uh, in a few, in a separate video. They also make pliers. Um, yes, they do make pliers as well. Um, this one happens to be their wire rope cutter and uh, wire sleeve or uh, ferrule crimper built into one tool. So you got the cutter up there and then you got uh, the crimping section there. Uh, so that is that. Let's move on to some Annex items. I bought two things from them. Annex, I think, is also from Sanjo. Yeah, there. So Annex is also from Sanjo. Um, both items made in Japan. Made in Japan. Uh, this one happens to be patented. This is their. They have several to choose from. I can't remember why exactly why I chose this one. But um, it is a angle adapter, um, industry lowest profile is what they say. I don't know how that compares to uh, some other brands that uh, you guys are more familiar with, like Milwaukee, DeWalt, uh, Woodpecker. There's probably a bunch of other ones too. I don't know how that compares. 38 millimeters uh, is the, the total height there. I think that includes the bit as well. And bits, they include four bits, uh, number two size. All right, and this other one here is a, um, a screw extracting, I'm going to call it a drill bit, or let's just call it screw extracting uh, bit. Hand operated, you insert the bit portion into the handle and it is a manual force um, make sure it's uh... <laughs> so that's indicating this this applies to any Phillips or posi driver um, uh, screwdrivers when you're using them if you were to divide the force um, into 10 sorry if you divide you should be applying 80% of your force in a downward motion and 20% of your force in the twisting motion. Pretty standard rule, in case you didn't know. 
uh, when dealing with uh, Phillips, Phillips or uh, cross recess, cross recess screwdrivers. So this is a dedicated uh, bit for extracting tiny little screws M1 to 2.6, uh, found on you know eyeglasses or uh, gaming consoles, um, laptops, that sort of stuff. And uh, let's move on to an item from Vessel. Uh, got chili catch. So I'm uh, speaking in Japanese here. This is. Uh, I just remove this from the packaging. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, so the bit is uh, made in Japan. However, the th this portion here, the sliding collar, which is yeah, this end is magnet. This end is uh, magnetic. Yeah, it's magnetic so that you can hold on to your bits uh, when you're drilling it uh, using your drill driver or impact if you're using that. Uh, yes, this is um, the Japan standard, which is 13 millimeters, but uh, some, some of you guys are uh, using Japanese standard bits uh, in some of your drill chucks. Uh, obviously, if you have a drill chuck with a three jaw chuck uh, you have no issues using uh, Japanese bits you can also grind it down if you had to as well which is what I've been doing for most of my bits uh, um, made in Japan there we go but the sliding collar is made in Japan uh, sorry China uh, seems to be aluminum uh, this is not loosey-goosey this collar there is a good bit of friction required to move that. There's probably uh, an o-ring or something like that to provide the friction. Uh, that's it. I'm not going to go any further than that on that. We got here um, a 14 mil socket go through type which I uh, use uh, sorry in my last, no, two videos ago, on my KTC video, I featured uh, the set that I have. Um, yeah, I had, I have all, all of these, plus a few more in the larger sizes, but I lost my 14 mil after making that video on a job, so I had to get a replacement. So that's that. And moving on to this hefty thing. It's not plastic, uh, it's, it's all metal body. And this one is from, nothing in English, but uh, it is OH. That uh, symbol there uh, is an O and an H overlapped. So OH is a Japanese uh, manufacturer of hammers. Uh, they specialize in hammer making. Uh, I think they do manufacture some other things as well, but primarily this is what they do. Uh, not just this, but all, all sorts of hammers. Um, this particular one is uh, going to complement my Halder uh, handleless uh, dead blow. Uh, I needed, I wanted something that was longer, uh, longer reach with a bit more heft, uh, and something that's going to not mar the uh, struck end, which uh, is brass over here, set in place with a split pin, so it is replaceable, serviceable. And it's got an anti-roll feature. I think I wanted something like that for uh, working on driveline stuff. Uh, half shaft, drive shaft, that sort of stuff. And moving on to a manufacturer that I have featured once before, but uh, there's hardly any uh, brand recognition, at least in North America, as far as I'm aware, all these years. Uh, being into tools, but uh, they have a name establishment, obviously in Japan, but also in other parts of Asia, uh, maybe in Europe too, I'm not sure. Some of you Europe, European viewers can maybe chime in. Um, made in Japan, yes, uh, they specialize in in hex tool making. So uh, they got uh, bits like this, um, 
obviously hex keys uh, and T handle format as well, some screwdriver ha uh, handled ones as well, and they also make bit sockets. So I've never had any bit sockets. I do have their hex keys, and I do have one of one of these bits that I bought many years ago. Pretty happy with it. So yeah, eight green inch pen. Probably noticed uh, that they this is dual standard. So they got the Jap Japan standard, which is thirteen, and then they got the uh, the rest of the world standard, <laughs> um, built into one. So that does not discriminate. <laughs> Universal. And I want really, really wanted to try out their uh, in-hex bit sockets. Um, I want to test out the the durability of these. Uh, I've read some uh, reviews in Japanese uh, blogs and very favorable reviews on them as far as uh, dur durability goes. Um, yeah, so this is a set. I didn't know that it included uh, hex keys with it as well, so uh, I assume this is going to be like a 1.5 to 3 mil in the hex keys and a 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. Um, for the European uh, fans, there's no 7, uh, in some cases 9. But uh, this is a very JIS set. Uh, their specialty, or not specialty, but uh, one of their features uh, is their taper head profile, which is yeah, right there. Very unique. As far as I know, nobody else in the world has a pattern like this, which distributes the uh, uh, load more evenly. Um, maybe they have a patent on it. Maybe that's why. So this is a fractional set. Which is something I wanted. I was contemplating whether to get a bondus set, uh, but I decided to go with eight. And 19 minutes into this, wow, took a lot longer than I thought. Uh, if you view this all the way to the end, yes, you are a tool aficionado just like me. Thank you for watching. Uh, if there was anything in here that you want to see a in-depth video on, uh, please leave it in the comments section down below. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I hope you guys have a have a good weekend or day of the week, whatever it may be. Uh, see you guys in the next video.